Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Friday the 27th of August 2021. My name is Reverend Jo Richards and I'm Rector here in Canterbury St Dunstan, St Mildred's and St Peter's. And I'm the Reverend Jenny Walpole, the Curate here in the Benefice. And lovely that you've joined us this morning for Morning Prayer. And today we've been asked to remember Monica, mother of Augustine of Hippo. So Jenny will tell us a little bit about St Monica. Monica was born in North Africa of Christian parents in 332 and she was married to a pagan named Patricius whom she converted to Christianity. They had three children of whom the most famous was her eldest child, the future Augustine. Indeed Augustine ascribed his conversion to the example and devotion of his mother. She never let me out of her prayers that you, O oh God, might say to the widow's son, young man, I say to you, rise. Which is why the gospel of the widow of Nain is traditionally read today as her memorial. Monica's husband died when she was 40. Her desire had been to be buried alongside him, but this was not to be. She died in Italy at Ostia in 387 on her way home to North Africa with her two sons. So today we remember St Monica. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As you dawn and use the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for today is that beautiful psalm, Psalm 139. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You encompass me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you, create, for you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were they all the members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O oh God, that the blood of the thirsty might depart from me. They speak against you with wicked intent. Your enemies take up your name for evil. Do I not oppose those, O oh Lord, who oppose you? Do I not abhor those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred that have become my own enemies also. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. 
See if there is any way of wickedness in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way, that trusting in your presence in this world, we may beyond this life still be with you, where you are alive and reign forever and ever. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Over to you, Jenny, for our first reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favour is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The clever see danger and hide, but the simple go on and suffer for it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honour and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. The cautious will keep far from them. Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer, and strife goes out. Quarrelling and abuse will cease. Those who love a pure heart and are gracious in speech will have the king as a friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the faithless. The lazy person says, There is a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. The mouth of a loose woman is a deep pit. He with whom the Lord is angry falls into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a boy, but the rod of discipline drives it far away, oppressing the poor in order to enrich oneself, and giving to the rich will lead only to loss. And now for our canticle. Raise, Raise us up, O God, God that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 31. Then he returned from the region of Tyre, and went by the way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. 
He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. And now for our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And now for our Gospel canticle, the Benedictus. They were faithful unto death, and God has given them the crown of life. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, Charles, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. They were faithful unto death, and God has given them the crown of life. Heavenly Father, as we come together on this day, we pray for this day that lies ahead. We pray for any meetings that we may be having, perhaps chance encounters in the street. We pray particularly for the funeral that Jenny and I will be taking later this morning. We pray for the family. And we pray at this time for all those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray, Lord, for this day and for our world. We pray particularly for the folks of Afghanistan at this time. For those who are mourning the loss of loved ones through the bombs that went off yesterday. We pray for those who are struggling to, to leave the country. We pray for those who are in hiding. We pray that your light may shine in dark places. that the quiet voice will be heard. We pray particularly at this time for women and children. We pray for the aid agencies on the ground, both here and around the world, for those that are supporting refugees. We pray particularly this day for Cran, and for the work that they're doing. The work of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. And for all those charities that work in such difficult situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray, O oh Lord, for our church. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop. We pray for Rose, our Bishop, for Joe, our Archdeacon, for Mark, our area Dean, and for all those, both lay and ordained, who minister across our benefice, our deanery, diocese and beyond. The Ministry of Picking Up the Phone, the Ministry of an Invitation to Coffee, the Ministry of Listening, of Empathy and Supporting. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We continue to pray for our city, for those that visit this place today. 
We pray for those that may leave, may, may arrive as visitors and leave as pilgrims. For those who visit, who visit our sacred places. For those who are supporting our local economy. We give thanks for Canterbury City Council for the work that they do. For capturing lives in Porchlight and the support that they offer to our homeless community. We pray for our hospitals, our doctor's surgeries, and our local hospice just down the road. Lord, in your mercy, hear <laughs> our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who have specifically asked us for prayer for today. For those known to us who are perhaps unwell at this time. For those who are continuing to struggle with COVID. For those who perhaps this day are feeling anxious, alone, or frightened. We pray for those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we've prayed already, we pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For those who are preparing for funerals and for those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for Saint Monica, who we remember today. Faithful God, who strengthened Monica, the mother of Augustine, with wisdom, and through her patience, patient endurance, encouraged him to seek after you. Give us the will to persist in prayer, that those who stray from you may be brought to faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's always lovely to be worshipping together. Please do join us for night prayer again at six. And then if you're able to, please do join us for our fifth Sunday Fifth Sunday United Benefit Service, which is at 11 o'clock at St Mildred's. And our guest speaker then will be Samuel Keeler Walker. So please do join us for our Eucharist there if you can. Otherwise, tonight, if not, uh, Monday's a bank holiday, so we'll catch up with you on Tuesday. God bless. Bye for now. Goodbye. Bye.